It's hard to believe today that salmon, brown trout, and steelhead are not originally native to Lake Michigan. Over 120 years ago, the Wisconsin Fish Commission began the stockings, which would eventually evolve into today's Great Lakes fisheries. Brown trout originated from Europe, while steelhead and king salmon were originally Pacific Ocean run fish from the West Coast. On today's program, we travel to eastern Wisconsin, near the community of Sheboygan, where we tackle these powerful fish through the ice on small streams with light tackle. Jason, got one. See you. Come on over. How do you feel, Carrie? Pretty nice. All right. Try to be over on that side if you can, Jason, because I'll try to work them up this way Kit. so we can get them into the hole better. Yeah. He came over to this rod, he just had it cranked. It was just <laughs> bucked right tight. I looked over here and you see the bow and the rod. These fish are awesome. I love yeah, these fish. It? This is fairly easy to do too. You don't need a lot of gear and Yeah. What a great what a great story. You know, these yeah. fish live in Lake Michigan, they come up yeah. in the fall and the spring to spawn and then they provide opportunities on light tackle like this. That's about as good as it right. gets. Right, we're using six pound test line product called the Automatic Fisherman. And that thing basically sets the hook in the fish so it makes it a lot, lot easier. You can use uh, lighter lines, See, where you, like I said, six pound test. If you're trying to do this with the tip up, it'd be very difficult. Well, they, yeah, they wouldn't trip it. Yeah, and then you'd have line laid on the ice getting broken. You notice that little blue thing floating around in the water. What that is is this product called the Ice Stopper. And that actually is going to eliminate the line from freezing into oh, the ice. Big. But it also acts like a little bumper. You can see it mm -hmm. when I'm fighting this fish. Instead of having the line touching the edges of the ice, the actual the uh, ice stopper actually protects the line. Yeah, that's a gorgeous fish. That's a female. Fish. There we go. Isn't that a dandy? Yeah. Well, oh, what a great way to start out the day. That's a beautiful fish. Boy, strong. Yeah, they're real nice and powerful fish. They're pretty. Yeah, excellent. Well, we'll cut the line here. We'll get that yeah. fish back in the water right away. You can tell, I don't know for a lot of guys that actually don't know this, but the female, this is a female brown because you can tell she's got a real narrow nose and she doesn't have a kipe on the end. A male will have a big old hook right here. It'll protrude about maybe this high. And, and they'll have a lot, much longer nose. You can also tell it's a hatchery fish because that adipose fin is cropped off on the yep, back. Very true. Yeah, well, we'll get that fish in the water. Beautiful fish. Nice work, Gary. She can grow up and be bigger. By using an amazing sense of smell, these trout migrate back to the streams where they were imprinted. Lake Michigan brown trout push into the streams during the fall while different strains of steelhead migrate into these streams from midwinter into the summer. Lake Michigan boasts several different strains of steelhead. Any midwinter thaw or rain that washes more of the river's smell into massive Lake Michigan brings in new waves of fish. Today, the Wisconsin runs of steelhead boast strong natural reproduction on many streams featuring truly wild fish. Jason and I just got that brown and what we're basically doing is we're taking the eggs from the fish and we're tying them up in little sacks like this. We put a few floats in it and we take the hook and we put it in the back side of the sack like that, roll it around so it's embedded into the, into the bait. We have an egg sinker, a bead, and a couple of tractants on the rod like that to, to uh, give it a little color. And what will happen is the sinker will sit on the bottom like that and this bait will just kind of rock in the current like this, rolling back and forth. And that actually acts as an attractant, but then when the fish actually bites, what will happen is in the actual automatic fisherman, what will happen is that the fish will have a little bit of slack like that so he can actually grab the bait, take out pure slack, and then the second that line gets tight, the shaft will drop down and the rod will snap up and set the hook in the fish. With that said, this is how we actually have our bait rigged. We have our spawn sack, 
we have our beads, we have our egg sinker, and we put it in the water. Make sure it goes into the hole. It go underneath the ice. We're fishing in a river system. So now we're going to basically put the ice stopper in the water. We're going to pull out some line until the ice stopper lays on its side. Then you know that you know you're on the bottom right now because the ice stopper is laying on its side. So then I'm going to go through, set the rod in the holder. I'm going to take the rod, bend it over, connect it onto the trigger pin. I'm going to hang my bobber onto this system like here. And I'll do it until that, li that ice stopper stands up like right there. Now I know I have a tight line. And with the trout fishing, I do not let, need to let them have two feet of slack. They're very aggressive fish. So I'll, I'll set it up to there's three or four inches of slack. The last thing I do is I crack this open like that and I put the ice stopper solution in it. You don't need to use it when it's cold, I mean when it's warm, but when it's cold like this, the holes will freeze in, and this is an awesome product to have right here, the ice stopper. You can use it any above water tip up, jig rods, and we actually have it in with the Automatic Fisherman product. The Automatic Fisherman was designed out of necessity for catching more trout and steelhead through the ice. These fish are very powerful, yet can bite surprisingly light. These fish are also very sensitive to light and noise. These devices set the hook, much like a downrigger, and allow anglers to fight the fish on traditional rod and reel. On many of these streams, most of the fish are caught in the pools, where incoming fish pause to rest. Savvy trout anglers on these winter streams often leave some slush in the hole to block the light and also are very cautious about making any unnecessary noise. The fish are seldom in true slack water. You can read the current on these small streams by how the water bobs up and down in the hole. Many of the fish are caught on the edges of the faster water and more aggressive fish are often at the top of the pool. That is cool. Uh, these fish are all from Lake Michigan and basically any tributary along the, the whole shoreline, Wisconsin and Illinois and the other side of Michigan, uh, on Michigan, you can catch these fish in the rivers, harbors. Mm -hmm. It's neat too how many different strains there are. Yeah. You know, yeah. And each strain yeah. looks different obviously, but they come in at different times. And yep. Yeah, you got a lot of Ganraskis, yeah, Chambers Creeks, Kamloops, Arley strains. Plus you got the sea farland browns, the German mm -hmm. browns. Yep. Oh, look at there, look at there. Beautiful male. There, look at that. Yeah, Rolled that's up a, in the line. Yeah, that's a beauty. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I just love when these fish get those kipes on the bottom, yeah. that bottom hook and jaw. Look at the colors of that fish. Yep. Here. Isn't that a beautiful? Just a gorgeous fish, you know. And catching these fish with a downrigger is obviously fun. Yes. But catching these fish on light tackle in a small stream like this—that's yeah. that's about as good as it gets. That is just a cool fishing experience. Yeah. That's a wild fish there. Yep. Wild fish, adipose. You got the little white tips to the tips of them. Yeah, that's just. There is some native reproduction in these in these rivers for the steelhead. Yeah. Uh, the difference on a steelhead is a steelhead comes from a lake and goes into a creek mm -hmm. or a stream. A rainbow is basically just a, a fish that stays into a lake and doesn't have a, a migratory uh, chance. Yeah, and these fish are originally from the west coast. They're originally yeah. ocean running fish that right. would run up into fresh water. And right. tell you what, you know, these fish, you know, they spend their whole lives out in the Great Lakes. That's why yep. they get so big, the forage yeah. out there. That's why they get so strong and they come in these little these little streams and it's just a yeah. magical fishing experience. There was one on here. Oh yeah, he's there. He's Is there. there yet? Yep. Rod was really pounding and we were running up here. Feel like a good fish? Yeah, I can't tell yet. He's just kind of laying below the hole.
Uh oh, Bob's taking his jacket out. You, uh, you mean business, don't you? I mean you? business. We're going to land this fish. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> I saw the sinker there. We got here. Just waiting for this fish to go on a run here. Here he comes. Oh, look at there. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Nice, nice brown. That is a gorgeous fish, huh? Isn't that a beautiful fish? It sure is. Wow. And that's why it didn't take those big runs. Yeah, the brown trout are kind of lethargic. Yeah, they? they just shake their head a little bit and pull. They're not like the uh, the steelheads that give you that real aggressive run. Yeah, but isn't that a, just a gorgeous, just a gorgeous fish? Wow. That's a special critter there, hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Yep, huh? just like you want him to. Oh, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? Got her? All Got right. it. Perfect. All right, let's get this fish back in the water. Yeah, hopefully next year it'll be a little bit bigger and yeah, a little more fun to catch than it was today. That's a beautiful fish, isn't it? It sure is. Wave this goodbye. Yep. <laughs> All right, that, that is cool. Hey, everyone, just a quick tip here. If you see this bobber was pulled up, and that can happen for a couple of reasons. Sometimes you have a lot of current, but today we've been uh, fighting with debris. There's a lot of grass and stuff coming down, and you see we've got some here on our sinker. We've also got some on our, our bait, and that's kind of not going to be real attractive to steelhead right, when you're trying to target them. So you're going to need to get that cleaned off. Make sure your hook is set good yet in the uh, spawn sack. Clean off the debris here on the uh, egg sinker. Get, get that all cleaned up. Even a little bit will catch more more uh, rapidly than uh, if you had nothing on there. Get it set back in and make it look a little bit more uh, attractive to a steelhead that may be uh, wandering by. Jason! Fish! Come on! Mama, wait! It's a nice fit. It looks like a decent fish. All right. Oh, oh nice brown. Yeah. Grab him. Nice brown. There. Wow, wow that's that. a pretty fish. That is. That's a pretty one. That is a beauty. Wow. Isn't that a gorgeous fish? <laughs> Oh, cool. Nice work. Now, what time of year do you typically start doing this? What are your peak uh, opportunities when you see these fish running? Normally, like a little, little bit before first ice, we're getting into them. Uh, usually right around the end of November. And we can actually catch these fish pretty much all the way through till ice out. Okay. You know? And then the browns, are, you know, they're, they're running in the fall. They're spotting in yes. the fall. But yep. some of these fish stay in the river all winter. And that's a... Yeah, that's a gorgeous fish there. That's a it? pretty brown. That's beautiful. Hey, we got another one on over here. Okay, let's get this fish unhooked here. We'll. I'll just cut the line on that okay. one. Okay. So All can... right. Let this fish go. All right. Let's get that other fish. Let's go. Still on there? Yep. Looks Rod's like bent. it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Rod's bent. Take the pole out of the holder and. Fight them. There we go. It's pretty, with this product, it's really cool because you get to fight that fish on a rod. Yeah. I mean, this is awesome. It is. Well, these fish bite light too, as strong and powerful as these fish are. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how light they'll bite. Yep. And how spooky they are. I mean, they're, they're just very spooky fish. A lot of mystique about steelhead. Yes. <laughs> yes. Here Bring the comes. rod over to the upstream Here side of the pole. They come oh, in yeah. a little bit better. Right, there's a steelhead. Another little steelhead. That's probably what about a two-year-old fish? Yeah, that's about a two-year-old fish. This yeah. year we've been running into a lot, lot more smaller fish than normal. Mm -hmm. Normally our fish are uh, 28 to 30 inches long. Yeah. This year we've been running across a lot of fish in the mid 20s to, you know, the low teens like this one. Which isn't bad, but when these fish start coming in the river pretty hard, like towards the end of uh, February, it's going to be fabulous. Right now we're fishing like the beginning part of February. And uh, one thing I do want to stress is the ability to 
be able to release these fish unharmed, mm -hmm. you know, and most guys would go through and try to get that hook out, but that fish will actually absorb that hook. Yeah, just cut the line so, and let it go. Yeah, cut the line, let them go. They can grow up to be bigger. There he goes. All right. One of the reasons why we had a little bit of success in the rivers is because we were actually using spawn sacks with floats in it. Um, that'll actually ride the bait in the water column, a little bit more visible for the fish, and uh, they don't bump into the line. So if you're fishing in a harbor where there's no current, there you wouldn't be able to use the floats. So then you would basically just take your spawn and you would not tie it with the floats inside of it. And uh, there you would be fishing from the top down. And in the river here, we're fishing from the bottom up. So we'll just kind of put our spawn sack tied up like this. So the, so the hook is easily com comes out when the rod sets the hook. but we use an egg sinker, so the egg sinker will sit on the bottom and the spawn sack will kind of float back in the current like this and rock and that gives it a little bit more visibility for the fish and gives it a lot more scent and color for the fish. Trout are more color and scent orientated than any other fish around. But I've been fishing steelhead for over 24 years in the rivers on the whole coast of Wisconsin and up in Lake Superior. And that's what I've actually found out to work the best in the rivers, is tying floats in with your spawn. It can be just the floats from Atlas bait, or an earplug, or a piece of styrofoam, it doesn't matter. You want to put it in the sack so it can be as soft as possible for that fish. That rod was bent over pretty good. Yeah, it was. It. I was just come up here to set another line, and uh, I saw the bobber start going up. Yeah, it looks like a good heavy fish. He doesn't like the hole. <laughs> There's not many steelhead that do, is there? <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, they, they get to see that light, and we, we, you know, it's funny. We we're just talking about that. The last rod we put in, we left a bunch of slush in the hole, you know, to, to kind of keep the hole a little bit dark. And just imagine if uh, you're trying to do this with a braided line on a tip-up, you know, play this yeah. fish out with the runs he took. You know, you wouldn't want, on a cold day like this, <laughs> I know what my hands would look like. We probably yeah. don't have enough band-aids with us to, so it would be very difficult. First of all, it's hard to get them hooked up without the automatic fisherman. Uh, secondly, uh, try to play a fish like this. Yeah. When he makes a run, you know, I, th I think uh, the, it'd pretty much be game over. Yeah, I'm gonna take off my jacket here, just in case I gotta reach my arm down. You might be cutting a groove in there. Now he's off to the side of the hole. There we go. Ooh, a nice steelhead. That is a beauty. Oh, look at that. Just looks like a car bumper, don't it? Just a nice silver. Nice fish. job, Bob. Isn't that a. Yeah. That, that is a beautiful steelhead. Yeah. Isn't that just beautiful? I just love it when they're silver like that. Anybody that fishes should uh, take an opportunity to get out and try catching oh. steelhead because it's it's a battle, you know. It's not just hooking up the fish and reeling them in. It's you know. Did some you big say runs. this is a fresh fish as silver as it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. No, fresh we're, out of Lake Michigan. We talked about it earlier. We're probably what a mile and a half or so from the harbor this morning, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, what a what a beauty. The automatic fisherman has revolutionized steelhead fishing. And I tell you what, big fish on small water is about as good as it gets. Thanks for watching. To find out more information on Jason Mitchell Outdoors, make their official web page one of your favorite pages. Find out upcoming show schedules and airtimes, along with past shows, article and product reviews at jasonmitchelloutdoors.com. Great information on the outdoors is just one click away.